SCP-4011. History is written by the victors. The SCP Foundation has a long and storied history of protecting the planet from anomalous threats. Depending on who you ask, they've been around for hundreds, if not thousands of years, doing their best to secure, contain, and protect. There have been issues that have cropped up, though, and occasionally things like SCP-2000, which allow the Foundation to repopulate the planet, can make for a messy history. Typically, though, the higher-ups in the Foundation have a pretty clear idea of where their organization has been and what it has done. It can be rather surprising, then, when they stumble upon a Foundation facility that they have no knowledge of. Even more troublesome is the fact that it's not even located on Earth. SCP-4011 is a facility located within and beneath Victoria Crater on Mars. 4011 has a rather unique object class situation, as the document formerly marked it as a Thaumiel object, something that the Foundation utilizes to help contain other anomalies, but it has been changed to a Keter class object. The only known entrance to this facility is an airlock located beneath an alcove on a rim of the crater, and although the architecture of the facility is similar to that of a standard Foundation site, the materials used to construct it seem to be of Martian origin. Additionally, the facility seems to be completely isolated from the outside world, with no form of communication functioning between the exterior and interior, and the internal atmosphere is comprised almost entirely of argon gas. Perhaps more notably, the Foundation believes the interior of this facility to be infinite in size. The facility was first discovered in 2006 by NASA during their remote exploration of Mars. Their rover photographed an artificial structure bearing the Foundation logo while exploring Victoria Crater, and Foundation agents embedded in NASA were able to quickly suppress the discovery. The implications of an unknown Foundation facility on Mars made it a moderate priority for exploration, but two remote exploration missions both failed due to the communication blocking effect of the facility, resulting in them losing contact upon entry. Manned missions were deemed impractical until 2049, when the Three Portlands Accord eased tensions between the Foundation and several groups of interest, and the Foundation was able to work with the group formerly known as Anderson Robotics to assist them in getting to Mars and building a provisional site there. Inside the facility are a large number of robotic entities, at least 3,800 of them, that are each individually sapient, but are also all a part of one large-scale artificial intelligence system. This AI, and by extension these robots, perform various maintenance and administrative tasks throughout the massive facility. The robots, as far as the Foundation has observed, come in three different forms. The first is a humanoid shape, made of a polished metallic material, standing between 1.7 and 2.5 meters tall, lacking fine detail or facial features. These perform general maintenance tasks and communicate with other robots, possibly functioning as organizers during crises. The second form appear as sets of metallic spheres, generally one large one with a series of smaller ones trailing behind it. The smallest of these forms measure as small as 2 centimeters for their large sphere, with the largest reaching 1 meter in diameter. These spheres are capable of levitation and flight through unknown means, as well as receiving, transmitting, and jamming signals sent through radio frequencies and anomalous channels, although they themselves are not immune to the communication jamming effect of the facility. Their role in the facility seems to be data storage, transmission, and processing, as well as covertly extracting data and interfering with external computer systems. The third common form is that of small metallic pyramids, measuring one centimeter to a side. These are capable of utilizing an anomalous force to form materials around them into shapes, which they typically use for rough construction and repair tasks. They do not appear to be capable of fine manipulation of materials, but have been seen carrying up to 12 tons of mass, with multiple instances working together to carry even heavier loads. 
They have also been seen utilizing their ability to form shells around their bodies when traveling outside of the facility, and are capable of levitation and flight. There have been a number of other forms observed by the Foundation, but these are the three most common. The AI running the facility has demonstrated extremely in-depth knowledge of Earth's history, particularly the history of the Foundation, and has even shared detailed descriptions of previously unknown events. This information has been proven to be accurate, and info gleaned from the AI has been used to discover a number of other SCPs, as well as help to explain or assist in containing other SCPs. This led the Foundation to classifying the facility as a Thaumiel entity, but eventually it was reclassified as Keter class, with no further communication or interaction allowed without direct approval from the O5 Council. We'll get to why that changed later, of course. In partnership with the former Anderson Robotics Company, the first team sent inside of the facility consisted of three androids, part of a special MTF, due to the argon gas. They are soon approached by one of the facility's humanoid robots, who tells them that they've entered a secure SCP Foundation facility, and they should provide identification immediately. The team decides to try a Foundation handshake protocol, providing a challenge phrase, to which the robot provides the correct response phrase, and tells the team that they apologize for the formalities. It also mentions one of the team members' serial numbers, and asks if they require assistance in accessing the archives. The team is a little unnerved that this entity knew their serial number and the correct handshake protocol, so perhaps it's accessing the Foundation network somehow. The team lead asks when the facility was built, and by whom, to which the robot responds that it was constructed by the SCP Foundation, completed in the year 18,541, a date which the Foundation believes corresponds to our year 1552. The lead then asks what the facility is for, to which the robot responds that their mission statement was to maintain a comprehensive historical archive of the SCP Foundation and its subject peoples, and to maintain the security and sovereignty of the Foundation. It then cuts off and tells the team that the rest of the mission statement is classified. The team discovers that there are hundreds of other robotic entities in the vicinity, and they decide to withdraw for now, to inform their superiors about the level of knowledge contained here in relation to the Foundation. The Foundation conducted plenty more explorations of the facility from then on, delving into the wealth of information contained there. They found a 3500 page biography of a prominent member of the Serpent's Hand that went into extremely intimate detail about their upbringing, philosophy, employment history, and activity. They proceeded to use the info to launch a raid on the target, capturing 25 Serpent's Hand members and preventing a planned assault on a Foundation site. They also found an SCP document for a Church of the Broken God object that went into much further detail about the object's origin. The expanded information led to the identification of several historical figures as church members, as well as a further understanding of the object's properties, which aided in containment. They also found a detailed report on an ethics committee investigation into the O5 Council, but the info has since been redacted, and everyone that uncovered it was given amnestics. There was an incident a few months after the initial exploration of the facility in relation to one of the androids on the MTF. Specialist Fenn was having a conversation with the director of the provisional site near the facility, and mentions that he is worried they won't have a foundation to come home to after the war. Fenn says that he is sure they'll beat the Lodians and everything will be fine, but what if they don't, and they're trapped here for the rest of their lives? The director asks what Fenn is talking about, as the Foundation isn't at war with anyone, and proceeds to activate a silent alarm. Fenn continues, saying that the nation of Lodia is the largest threat the Foundation has ever seen, they've been at war for three years, and that's why they came here to Mars. The director speaks an override command that paralyzes Fenn as security staff enter, and the director says that one of them has been seriously affected by 4011. It's interesting that the director acknowledges that 
they could be the one affected by not having knowledge of this nation of Lodia, and both of them are placed into isolation. Similar memories of this nation of Lodia were found in all members of Fen's MTF, which the Foundation proceeded to expunge from their minds. The idea that the facility is actively restructuring people's memories of past events is worrisome, and the rest of the document is sealed under level 5 clearance. The secure version of the document provides a few more addenda for us, as well as revealing a bit more about some of the previously redacted things. Notably, one of the documents that the Foundation discovered within the facility is a five volume book series, consisting of over 20,000 pages titled History of the Foundation, Middle Period. Each page has the words Pre Revision Archive at the top and the books detail an unknown ancient civilization referred to as the Foundation Under SCP. This society is described as featuring a rigid caste system, ruled by a council of overseers, devoted to the containment and study of anomalous entities. They do this in service to a deity referred to only as SCP. At the height of this civilization, it encompassed over half of modern day Europe but it underwent conflicts with a large number of other civilizations, including the Davite Empire. The information contained in the volume does not match what the Foundation currently understands to be the history of the Davites, although that in itself is not that ridiculous, as Davite history tends to be a little fluid. The books finish with a war occurring between the Foundation and the Davite Empire in 1551 featuring a number of highly destructive anomalous weaponry, with the results of that war unknown due to the text being redacted. The Foundation was working to recover the text to discover what actually happened, but an incident resulted in the loss of the book series. Moving on, we see that the text in the document suggesting that 4011 is modifying people's memories has actually been striked out, with new text stating that later events contradict this theory. The fifth addendum is another exploration log featuring the same three androids from before, with the team lead granted temporary level 5 clearance in order to fully access the facility. The leader is greeted by one of the robots as an overseer, and is allowed full access along with their team. They ask the robot what the full mission statement of the facility is, as they were previously cut off due to lack of clearance. The robot says that they are to maintain the security and sovereignty of the Foundation by retroactively neutralizing evident threats through Protocol Alpha-1-7. When asked about this protocol, however, the robot apologizes, and says that they cannot discuss it further outside of the Alpha-1 array, referring to the lower levels of the facility. The team ponders the statement that the facility neutralizes threats retroactively, and they have a seemingly unlimited knowledge of history. The team eventually continues down below and makes it to a large reinforced door with a sign reading Alpha One Array in English and two other unknown languages. The team is led inside, entering into a long passageway lined with books. The room is also filled with the spherical and pyramidal robots, who are regularly moving books between shelves. The team remarks on how much radioactivity is happening in this room, as well as thaumaturgical or magical communication. The team has so far been speaking to one another through a digital connection, but their connection is suddenly breached by the administrator of the facility, presumably the AI. Despite attempts to stop the administrator from scanning their systems, it does so, until the team forcibly disconnects. Afterwards, they switch to normal voice communication, but the AI did have three seconds of full access to their memories. The team continues on, finding the book set on the history of the Foundation. The leader uses their overseer privilege to take the books along, and one of the team begins to read. They remark on the supposed war with the Davites that occurred in the 1500s, which would be well past the Black Zone for SCP-140, a book that can retroactively expand the history of the Davite Empire. 
In other words, this history isn't even close to what the Foundation's current history is, and Fenn suggests that perhaps this has something to do with retroactive neutralization. They continue on until they reach a large cylindrical shaft with a glass floor and ceiling. Seven other passageways filled with books extend out from this cylinder, and what looks like similar passageways exist both above and below them. The robot with them says that this is the Alpha-1 array, and their current directive of retroactively neutralizing threats to the Foundation is active. The robot continues by saying that these threats are weeds that seek to smother the light of SCP. In a time long past, they grew very nearly too high, and nearly blocked out the sun of the Foundation, but now with Protocol Alpha-17, they can tear out the weeds at the roots. As the robot mentions the Davites, it stops and stays silent for 10 seconds. Another robot speaks, saying that Alpha-1A has been identified, and they are initializing Protocol Alpha-17. The first robot speaks again, saying that there was no time long past. The weeds are not and never were, and SCP will always shine down upon us. They go silent again as a humming sound begins to emanate from the metallic tower in the center of the cylinder they're in. One of the robots then asks what SCP-140 is, and the tower flashes as the team's audio and video recordings become corrupted. Footage resumes ten minutes later as the team is running through the upper floors of the facility, carrying the book series on the history of the Foundation. They all suddenly stop, wondering what just happened to their memories, and realize that since they seem to be running towards the exit, they may as well continue that way. The sixth addendum is where we get most of our info about what exactly is happening at this facility. The Alpha-1 array is a temporal modification device, capable of adjusting seemingly any event in history. The AI running the facility uses this device to purge various people and groups from existence by retroactively preventing their creation. They do this on anyone that presents an existential threat to the SCP Foundation. Obviously, it's pretty hard to detect when they use this, as they're completely modifying history. However, since those inside of the facility are immune to the history changing effects, they keep detailed logs of all of the different timelines. This is what all of their books contain, the histories of every history. Earlier, Fenn mentioned the nation of Lodia to the site director, who had never heard of it. This wasn't because the nation of Lodia didn't exist, but rather because it used to exist, and the AI changed things. The MTF still remembered the nation of Lodia and the war they were involved in because they were inside the facility when the AI changed history. Previously, the nation of Lodia was a covert society of anomalous humanoids that began to attack Foundation sites using advanced anomalous technology escalating into full-blown war. With history changed though, what everyone else now remembers is that the Foundation discovered the nation of Lodia shortly after their foundation, and quickly quashed it. All in all, this thing has done a lot of good for the Foundation, and it probably wouldn't have made it nearly this far without this facility and the AI working to help. That being said, there are problems. Aside from the fact that the Foundation always gets a little jumpy about changing history, especially coming from an anomaly they're not in control of, the AI has an issue with SCP-140. It seems that the AI was not aware of this book before scanning the MTF's memories, but now that it is aware, it's continuing to make frequent requests for access to it. It has since revealed that it cannot change any parts of history that have already been affected by the book, and it cannot change history to prevent the book from being created in the first place. In other words, SCP-140 is a threat to our reality that not even the greatest threat neutralizer around can deal with. Additionally, since discovering SCP-140, robots in the facility have begun to speak less coherently, 
including an increased number of pauses and verbal glitches, as well as an increasing use of religious imagery referring to a deity called SCP. That brings us to the final addendum, an incident that began when a robot approached one of the androids who was stationed inside of the facility. The robot says that they have come to a conclusion regarding SCP-140. The object must be destroyed, lest it threaten the light of SCP. The Council of Overseers lie in the dark beyond SCP, and they are unaware. SCP-140 has intertwined itself too closely with them, and the Alpha Array cannot return the Overseers to the light. They want the book so they can destroy it, otherwise they may be forced to do something. That's a rather ominous threat from an AI in charge of a history-changing machine, but the O5 Council stands firm and rejects their request. Shortly after, the team lead of the MTF is denied access to the facility, and the nearby provisional site suddenly goes on alert due to an unexpected action by a contained anomaly. Not long after, a number of spherical robots emerge from the facility and move into the provisional site. The Foundation on Earth soon loses contact with the site, only learning a bit more from recovered logs gathered by the MTF. Essentially, what occurred was sort of a battle between the Android MTF members and the AI, as the AI worked to wipe out the provisional site. It ultimately accomplished this by hacking into two of the MTF members and taking control of their bodies. Although the team put up as much resistance as they could, the AI breached the doors of the facility, compromising the internal atmosphere. 68 Foundation members died during the breach, with only the MTF members surviving due to being able to handle the atmosphere. The message is pretty clear then. This AI has declared itself as an enemy to the Foundation. It may seem to serve the same ideals as they do, protecting the world from anomalous threats, but the Foundation it serves is a far cry from the modern Foundation. A number of issues related to this are brought up by the O5 Council, and they put them to vote. They easily pass the declaration that SCP-4011 represents an existential threat to the Foundation. They also easily pass the declaration that recontainment of SCP-4011 is a top-level priority, and the declaration that this containment should be the primary responsibility of two of the O5 members. A bit trickier was the declaration that under no circumstances should SCP-4011 be permitted access to SCP-140. This narrowly passed, but it seems that the Council is pretty divided about whether or not to bend to this thing's demands in order to avoid being retroactively eliminated. Finally, the last vote was on whether or not the Foundation should, after containing 4011, begin researching how to control and manage the Alpha-1 array, eventually using it to maintain normalcy. They apparently couldn't come to a consensus on this one, and have delayed the vote. Well sure, messing with history by retroactively eliminating threats is pretty messy business, but you can't argue with the results. The Foundation has been safeguarded, without their knowledge, for hundreds of years by this thing and it probably would have continued to protect them for countless years more if they hadn't stumbled upon it. It does of course beg the question of what exactly happened to this mega foundation civilization capable of building anomalous facilities on Mars. Presumably this war with the Davites messed things up, and the facility wasn't able to completely fix it, but we'll never really know. Of course, the AI can modify histories in ways that the modern Foundation can't understand, so why hasn't it just modified things to go their way and have the book delivered? How can the Foundation hope to really combat such a threat when it can rewrite history to win any battle it wants? We're left without answers for these questions, but that's alright. They do say that history is written by the victors, but it's rarely taken quite as literally as this.